All right, so we are in Synthize. So Synthize is, as I said earlier, is the base of um, this type of project. So we need to track the um, the scene first. So let's bring the uh, footage in here. It's 24 frames per second, no interlacing. I'm going to use the preset that I have created for HV20. Now this is uh, not so much important for tracking purposes itself for now. Synthize will do the job even with the other settings that we had here by default for what we have in mind anyway. But I want to drive the um, importance of this backplate for uh, something that we're going to use uh, later on which has to do with the lens distortion. Okay, so let's just uh, bring this footage in. It's going to cache into the memories. Now let's do the auto tracking here, but before that let's tell Synthize that we have a tripod mounted camera and we want to fine tune. So let's just do auto track and you will see what I meant earlier about no perspective shift in the uh, scene, no parallax, uh, because the camera is on tripod. So we have a solution here that is 1.34 horizontal pixel error so this is not good obviously it's more than a pixel which is not going to give you a good tracking but that's a start so let's see how do we improve that now first what I would do is shift C will open a dialog box here for the error correction and I'm going to get rid of all the high error trackers there are a lot of them and you can see here that this the 2D and the 3D track they are not aligned. So fix it, got rid of that, solve again, and we have a solution that's about one pixel. You look at this shot here and look at the door. When this door is close to the edge, it looks like it's arching. In reality it is a straight door. When it comes inside, you can see that the line turns into a straight line somewhat here and this one now is curved and this is because of the lens distortion which we have to live with for most consumer cameras here also you see this door here is arching in now that's okay no big deal but uh, certainly this wouldn't give you a good footage to work with uh, when you are trying to bring in 3D objects. So here what we have to do either, you know, you can introduce lens distortion in the uh, other processes such as Maya or you get rid of it here. I'm going to get rid of lens distortion here. Now there is a workflow inside of Synthize here and when you open it, it gives you a grid here. So we let Synthize calculate distortion. Let's go here and solve and a couple of things happened. One, it did correct the lens distortion and I can show you here that you have distortion calculated at negative 0 0.01046 and you see here the grid line is now turned into a type of lens distortion that we have here so you can just look at it's matching now you know with the curve of the uh, of the door but the other thing that happened is if you go back and look at your error terms now it's 0 0.938 which is much better than the uh, than the other one let's see if there are any more high error trackers that we can get rid of none okay that's fine all right so that's where we are at this point now two things you can do. One is take this information here and I'll just copy and paste it inside of a uh, notepad. Uh, it's off the screen but that's okay. It's on the other monitor and I'll just save it. The other thing you can do and, and I'll tell you later on what do we use that for or how do we use that inside of uh, Fusion in this case. But the other thing you can do is actually look at the lens workflow here, right? Now, I'm going to go to the last frame, close to the last frame, where you can see the arching here. Lens distortion workflow would actually let you correct distortion inside of Synthize itself. And when you say, okay, here, just keep an eye here on the door as I do that. 
it straightens up you know so lens distortion is gone if you go back to lens distortion workflow here it will tell you that there is no distortion anymore because synthize has corrected that so that's great but this is inside of synthize you know what do we do with this information now well one of the ways that you can uh, use this information or the change is by saving the sequence the image sequence and you can rename it whatever and it will generate image sequences that would be uh, undistorted and you can use that then further in your pipeline when you do things in Maya or Fusion or any other software let's just stop here in terms of that process and just go over the, the next steps here um, we have an arch here of all the track points these are all the track points that are tracked inside of the scene so as you can see this particular one here there is a uh, an electrical outlet and that track point is just going to stick to that electrical output wherever it goes right and that's how the camera is solved why do we have this arch is because there is no perspective shift this camera is not moving anywhere so if you have an object here and one other object here when you rotate this camera on the y-axis right both of them will move from the left to right if you're moving it that way at the same rate so you, you can't really tell which one is moving faster than the uh, the other one which means that synthize is giving you two and a half D solution rather than full 3d solution although there is a space here that you can see this is a 3d space right and we will make use of this inside of fusion and also Maya but as far as um, the actual room dynamics here you know the measurements and everything you don't have that here because this was not a full 3d solve but that's fine you know that's perfectly good enough for us and and this is this is going to work so let me see the other thing that I do here is change this to uh, quad perspective and here what you see is the scene itself with the grid line so it tells you which way is the X Y and the Z um, and then you can align the way you want so what I will do is go to the objects here and select the camera and I will lock so that the whole camera will move and I'll just rotate this uh, in the uh, top view and try to you know align it so that Z axis facing us or, or in this direction and let me just move this I'm not going to do the whole thing here but just to give you an idea as to you know where I'm moving the camera I want this center line or the center point right here somewhere right so I'm going to just get it here somehow because it's two and a half D and, and that's the advantage here that we really don't have to worry too much about how we move the camera the other um, let's see it maybe this one here or maybe this one yeah so this will align the plane the actual ground plane of the 3d space um, align it with the, uh, the the ground plane of the room itself right so it would be something like this so now you can see that my grid lines are aligned properly now you could have done this in Maya also and, and I'll show you how to do that but <coughs> the advantage of doing this here is that once you export this data the track data into fusion and into Maya they are both going to be in sync and uh, I'll just click here just to show you know, how it looks and it's a Maya file and then we open the same shot inside of Maya so this is all for now and uh, we'll take it from here thanks